Welcome to Django Code Review. In this one, we are gonna be reviewing your Django code. So if you want yours review, make sure you're a subscriber on our YouTube channel, that is youtube.com slash coding entrepreneurs, or simply join cfe.com slash YouTube, that will redirect you here. Make sure you're a subscriber with that bell on, and you're gonna to wanna to jump in to any of our Django code review videos, ideally the most recent one. So in this case, we're gonna be going in here and we're gonna be using um, Ejazz. I think that's your name, Ejazz. We're gonna be looking over your GitHub repo. So if you wanna be eligible for this, you wanna make sure you're using a Django project as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at Ejazz's repo. So in this one, this is using um, basically a way to like uh, better understand Django. So sometimes we are gonna be actually going in there and giving suggestions for code changes inside of the code and submitting some of those changes. In other cases, we're just gonna be reviewing it and allowing you to watch this video and make changes as you would like. First and foremost, I think that your main project, or it's fairly obvious that your main project is in here and it's not in an SRC folder. So if you look at our repo here, the ServeUp2 repo, you'll see that we have our Django project inside of an SRC folder. In fact, a lot of times you will see some sort of source folder for any given project, right? So this is not even a Django project, it's an Angular project, the SRC folder is there. So you're definitely gonna wanna get in that habit. So I recommend that you do that and move your entire project in there, including that proc file. It's possible that you put this on here because Heroku needs your proc file in the root of your Django project, or at least that's how we worked it, but um, maybe not. I, I'm not exactly sure why it is that you did it this way, but I do recommend that you put your Django project in that SRC folder. The next thing is, um, I, I think this is an app where this is your Django project. Yes, it is. So this is your Django project because settings.py is in there. Um, and then also your WSGI will also say where your Django project is. And so does manage.py. Those both say where it is. Okay, so this is an app then, and it's called RT. That is not descriptive at all. You wanna make sure that your apps are descriptive. You wanna have it so that anybody can go in there and go, oh, I know exactly what that is. I mean, even if you called it thoughts, which might conflict a little bit with this, or you could call it posts, because that describes as to what it is. It's posts, you're gonna be making posts here. At least that's what I assume when you're talking about random thoughts. Um, and then in, we jump into your models.py, same issue is here, right? So the name of your app is RT and then the name of your model is RT. It's not descriptive, I have no idea what's going on here, so it's rather confusing. I would consider changing the name of that model and also how you're going to name it and make sure you're naming it in the appropriate way. So let's go ahead and take a look at our project for ServeUp2 and we're gonna look at courses and then in model, models.py, Right, so I have my courses. This is how you name model classes, right? You, you give them a fairly descriptive name itself. So course is fairly descriptive. So, so you have an idea as to what this is, even without reading the code. So I wanna say the same exact thing is true here. Um, everything else is looking pretty good. Um, thought, what is this? Is it, should it be called content? I mean, again, making it more and more descriptive on everything that you're doing. Perhaps the model name should be thought and then the actual area where you're writing your thought should be content. We actually do this in our blog project in TriJingo 1.9. So the next thing that I wanna take a look at is your requirements file. That's looking pretty good. I'm, I would imagine that's up to date and, or at least it is accurate to your project. That's good, I like seeing that. Um, your db.sqlite3, if you're doing a actual production file, as in you're bringing this project live, you can totally ignore your db.sqlite3 in your git ignore file. Um, you don't need to push that to your GitHub. I know we do it all the time, but that is mainly for people to learn from, not, not really because it's a good thing to do. Um, okay, so the next thing in your templates, let's take a look. These look pretty solid. Um, since you have an app, I would consider putting these into an app folder, much like registration is, right? So you have registration in a folder. Um, you're gonna wanna put any other app in that folder as well. So uh, inside of your app, your RT app, let's take a look at your views to see what is explaining this, right? So in here, 
I would change again the name from RT, but but put your template actually in there uh, inside of its own folder and then have it referenced that way. Again, you can use serve up as an example of that. So inside of our views, actually we're using class-based views, but the, the one that actually has a direction, it shows you courses as the folder for courses and in there. So in this case, I actually have the templates inside of the app itself, but um, hopefully you understand what I'm talking about here. If you don't, definitely consider taking a look at our uh, Django class-based views unleashed on joincfe.com. So um, the next thing here is your query sets. I would 100% recommend that you use a model manager for this because then you don't have to be redundant, right? So right here, you have RT uh, order by this right here. So this call is redundant right here, um, right here, right here. Um, so I would consider actually making, oh, doing an override where your order by is in there by default on all. Um, further, just so you know, you don't actually have to do dot all as well as dot filter. You can actually just do rt.objects.filter and then put the order by last. I always think that you should put the order by last because you want to do all your filtering up front and then you're ordering last or any sort of cuts or, um, you know, like if you want to just use part of the query set, you, you could do that as well. Um, let's see what else. Forms.py. Again, you're gonna to wanna to change how your form is named. You don't wanna use underscores and class names. Um, that is popular for function-based views or functions in general. So um, let's see if I have one in serve up. I don't think I do. Let's go ahead and jump into try Django 1.11 and just show you what I mean. Restaurants, views. And well, actually you can see it in the methods itself. So you use underscores in methods or functions use methods, uh, use underscores to separate the names, classes don't. That's another thing that you definitely wanna get the habit of doing. Uh, the form itself is fine. I mean, you don't have a whole lot here. You might consider um, adding some additional validation if you need. So I think that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and take a look at your settings file. Um, hopefully this is not the same secret key you use in production as it says right here. I don't think it is because you have debug being true here. Um, same thing with your apps. I do like that you have third party apps here as well as my apps. That's great. I'm glad you followed along with that in particular. Um, your template directories. I want to be a little, you should be more robust with this. Um, like your path. So if you scroll down a little bit, um, your static root is that sort of robustness. You want to do that same thing for your templates. Template dir is right here. Crispy pack, all this stuff's looking good. I would also move your email settings to the top. Um, I, I believe that's convention. You don't have to. This is just a suggestion. Especially this is just a suggestion. Um, the template itself, so this right here, you might really, really consider doing that. That's that's like a very strong suggestion where the email location doesn't matter actually that much. Uh, let's look at your URLs. URLs are not that great. So I know that Django documentation says you can import the entire view module. I totally, totally do not agree with this unless you only have one app. The only, that's the only time that I would ever do it is if you only have one app, but more than likely your project's gonna grow from one app. So you're not gonna to wanna to stick with just that one. So make sure that you're importing the individual functions or class-based views themselves instead of importing the entire view. So what I'm saying is from rt.views, import home, import submit, and then do that accordingly. That is the one huge exception that I would say to these views. I, really, I realize that the Django documentation says otherwise, but that's usually because they're talking about just one app or if you have your urls.py on your actual app itself. So if it is in here. Anyways, okay, so that's it. Thanks, Ejaz, for your submission. Hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully everyone else did too. If you like this video, please um, consider leaving a comment or voting us up. And thanks for watching.